Before his passing in 2011, Steve Jobs named Tim Cook CEO of Apple. This transition earned Tim Cook an unprecedented amount of attention and scrutiny from the tech industry. But despite being in the public eye for so long, there are still many things about him that people don't know. So here are 10 facts about Tim Cook. In 1996, Cook was misdiagnosed with multiple sclerosis, something he says made him view the world in a different way. Afterward, he made lifestyle changes like sticking to a healthy diet and becoming a fitness enthusiast. Cook is often seen eating an energy bar during meetings and making daily visits to the gym. Despite Apple's state-of-the-art gym facility, Cook uses an off-campus fitness center in order to retain what he calls a basic level of privacy. The growing health epidemic plaguing countries across the globe prompted him to make health the primary focus of the Apple Watch. Cook said the device helped him lose 30 pounds and is optimistic that others can achieve similar results. Speculation about Tim Cook's sexuality began shortly after becoming Apple's CEO. His unknown private life and lack of public relationships led to rumors speculating that Apple's CEO might be gay. Tim Cook publicly acknowledged his sexuality in a 2014 Bloomberg article titled, Tim Cook Speaks Up. He said, while I have never denied my sexuality, I haven't publicly acknowledged it either, until now. So let me be clear, I am proud to be gay and I consider being gay among the greatest gifts God has given me. Cook is allegedly dating Benjamin Ling, an investment partner at Kosla Ventures, although the relationship has yet to be confirmed. Tim Cook's day starts at 3.45 a.m. and he begins sending emails by 4.30. Then it's off to the gym at 5 a.m. and he arrives to work by 6.30. He has held Sunday night staff meetings by telephone to prepare for the next week and he's always the last person to leave the office. In response to his demanding schedule, Cook said, The thing about it is, when you love what you do, you don't really think of it as work. It's what you do, and that's the good fortune of where I find myself. Cook's passion for human rights was fueled in part by the deep-seated racism that he witnessed firsthand while growing up in Alabama in the 60s and early 70s. During a 2013 speech where Cook received the IQLA Lifetime Achievement Award, the Apple CEO spoke openly about witnessing a Ku Klux Klan cross-burning firsthand, an event which he said was permanently imprinted on his brain and changed his life forever. Since these early days, Cook later explained, I have seen and have experienced many types of discrimination, and all of them were rooted in the fear of people that were different than the majority. In his office, Cook has framed pictures of his biggest role models, Robert Kennedy and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Cook's civil rights activism has earned him several accolades, including the Museum Free Expression Award, the Human Rights Campaign's Visibility Award, and the Robert F. Kennedy Center's Ripple of Hope Award. On March 27, 2015, Cook announced he'd be donating the vast majority of his wealth to charitable projects, but only after paying for his nephew's college education. Cook is not only charitable with his own money, but Apple's too. He began a charitable matching program for full-time employees where Apple matches its workers' donations dollar for dollar up to $10,000 annually. Cook has participated in charitable cycling events and partners with Charity Buzz every year to auction off a lunch meeting with him benefiting charitable causes. As a student at Duke University, Cook outlined a career plan for the next 25 years of his life. He later admitted that only the first one to two years of the plan were accurate, but this habit of preparedness and planning allowed Cook to achieve unimaginable career success. While still in college, he worked closely with Reynolds Aluminum's president to plan staff layoffs when the company was floundering. For 12 years, Cook worked his way through the ranks at IBM until becoming Director of North American Fulfillment. He later worked for Compaq as Vice President of Corporate Materials, but only for one year, until he took the job at Apple as their Chief Operating Officer. Upon receiving his job at Apple, he broke with tradition for operations executives at the company. 
Cook requested to have a small office kitty corner for Steve Jobs' office. Few people thought much of it at the time, but they would later look back at it as an indication of the new leader's ambition. Tim Cook may not have the same tyrannical reputation as Steve Jobs, but he's no softy. Cook is supposedly not a fan of small talk, and he has earned a reputation for being quite harsh and demanding with his staff. Cook reportedly told a planner that their numbers made him want to jump out that window over there. On another occasion, when in a meeting discussing a problem in China, Tim Cook noted that the problem was really bad and that someone should be in China fixing it. 30 minutes later, Cook then famously looked over at Apple's operations manager, Sabi Khan, and asked, Why are you still here? Khan was on the next flight to China. By some tech companies, privacy rights have been seen as little importance to consumers, but Tim Cook has taken a hardline stance on the issue. He said, Our values are that we do think that people have a right to privacy, and that our customers are not our products. We don't collect a lot of your data and understand every little detail about your life. That's just not the business that we're in. In 2016, Cook caused controversy by refusing to create a special operating system designed to unlock an iPhone belonging to a San Bernardino shooter. He said creating the software would set a dangerous precedent and could extend to the US government demanding Apple build surveillance software capable of intercepting data on all iPhones across the globe. Cook takes privacy so seriously that he refuses to store consumer data even at the detriment of Apple's own virtual assistant, Siri. Ex-employees revealed that the lack of consumer data received from iPhones stunted the growth of Siri and caused it to fall behind other assistants made by Microsoft and Google. Tim Cook considers accessibility a core value of Apple and said, People with disabilities often find themselves in a struggle to have their human dignity acknowledged. They frequently are left in the shadows of technological advancements that are a source of empowerment and attainment for others. But Apple's engineers push back against this unacceptable reality. At Apple's annual shareholder meeting, an attendee advised Cook to only make moves that were profitable for the company. This drew an intense response from Cook, who said, When we work on making our devices accessible by the blind, I don't consider the bloody ROI. If you want me to do things only for ROI reasons, you should get out of this stock. iPhone continues to be the number one device used by people with various disabilities, and Cook's stance on the issue has gained a massive support from the community. Cook is one of the world's top CEOs, but you wouldn't assume that by looking at his home. He lives in a 2,400 square foot, relatively modest condo in Palo Alto, California. Compare that to Steve Jobs' 6,578 square foot home with over half an acre of land. Cook is quoted as saying, I like to be reminded of where I'm from, and putting myself in modest surroundings helped me do that. Money is not a motivator for me. Modesty must run in the family since his mother still lives in Cook's childhood Alabama home. He makes frequent trips to the small town where Cook said he developed his moral sense. 